It's the Church Solutions Podcast, and my name is Phil Thompson. Steve Lacey, who is normally uh, our co-host here, is not uh, with us today. He's got a project he's working on here with us, and so you got me, but I have a guest that uh, I thoroughly enjoy interviewing. He's back uh, with us after, a, it's been a while, I don't know how long it's been, but uh, we'll get to our guest here in just a moment. Uh, thank you so much for spending some time with us on the Church Solutions Podcast. I want to remind you that we have a webinar coming up. It's called From Crash to Comeback. And if you do streaming video with your churches, I hope every church does it in some way. Uh, this is a, a webinar we're going to do September 17th, and it's really specifically focused on what to do when you're streaming and all of a sudden you're not. You know, something goes wrong, uh, something crashes, buffering, uh, video, you know, the computer explodes. Well, maybe, I don't know if we can help you with that, but we've got some tips here with the Crash to Comeback webinar that uh, you might want to take a look at, and it's going to be September 17th. It is 12 noon, and you can sign up for it at webinar.streamingchurch.tv. Um, and, and here's the thing, even if you can't make the webinar live, uh, sign up anyhow, because that way you'll get a recorded copy of it. And while you may not uh, always have problems Sunday morning, in fact, we hope you don't have problems streaming your church services, uh, occasionally something goes wrong, right? And so it's kind of nice to have what we're going to talk about in your back pocket, so to speak. We'll give you some tips, some things for your volunteers as well as you. So uh, so check it out and just go to webinar.streamingchurch.tv from uh, Crash to Comeback. That's coming up here real soon. Well, I can't believe we're already in September here. All right. So uh, this is episode number 443. And our guest today is an author and he's an entrepreneur. Uh, he grew up in the mountains of Guatemala as a missionary kid and a uh, Later on, he moved to Texas, where he finished up his schooling there, got his bachelor's degree in marketing, uh, and then he also began writing and uh, working with the church uh, as a creative director, if I remember right, and he had his hand in a lot of things, as many of us do, involved in ministry, from leading worship to running the technical side of things, and during that time, that's where he really developed a creative passion uh, for uh, a passion for creative process and helping churches to effectively communicate. So he's got websites and stuff. We'll talk a little bit about that later. He does conferences. And the last time I, it's been a while, but I think he still lives in San Antonio, Texas. Is that right? I do. Yeah. All right. Uh, where he writes. And and do you still roast your own coffee beans? I don't anymore. I've, I've finally embraced just the really good coffee beans that are roasted for me. So. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. I'll scratch that off your list. His latest book is called Don't Burn Out, Burn Bright. So please yeah. welcome Jonathan Mom to the Church Solutions Podcast. Jonathan, how are you? I'm doing good. It's it's a good rainy, rainy day. So oh, really? not too bad. All yeah, right. it's That's... been pouring. Oh, my goodness. Well, we got monsoon action here in Arizona. We're in Tucson. So we do get monsoons this time of the year. Uh, but I think it's going to be like 104 today or something. So Ooh. Yeah. yeah, we're we're rocking 84, which is not... Yeah. Not bad for September in San Antonio. Yeah, San Antonio is a beautiful place. I, I've been there. I like it. Okay, so let's talk about the book, Don't Burn Out, uh, Burn Bright. You uh, you have been helping churches for a long time. Uh, before we do that, real quick, let me back up. You've got several websites. One of them was uh, Church Designs. Help me with that. Church Stage and Ideas. Yeah, another person has taken that over, but that was okay. uh, one of my first projects. Now, most of my time is spent with sundaysocial.tv, which is um, like a, a library of graphics that churches can use for their social media. And then a new one is pastorrev.com. Um, it's basically AI sermon prep tools. Not read, like read AI. It. Yeah, yeah, not. What's that? G repeat that website again. Yeah, pastor, pastorrev.com, R-E-V, like rev up your pastor. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's it's really cool. It, it basically just uses AI as a research assistant, not so much a thinking assistant. So uh, can, can do some really cool stuff for sermon prep, for um, planning object lessons, all sorts of really cool tools that are that are built in on that site. So. All right, good. Well, we can talk a little bit about that later. So let's talk about the book, as I mentioned here. Uh, yeah. So uh, burn out, don't burn out, burn bright. Okay, so. Uh, 
Why do you think, and, and I, I know a thing or two about this, but why do you think burnout is such a prevalent issue among ministry leaders? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of reasons. And, I, and in the book, we talk really about 10 pillars of health. So I think one of the disservices we do to this topic of burnout is by saying, if you only do this, or if you only do this, or if you, you know, if you, if you're truly, you know, certain serving God, you can't burn out. And we, we say all these nice ideas, but burnout is a, is a complex issue. Um, but yeah, I mean, in ministry, even if it wasn't for the current sort of mega church excellence, like we got to kill it, you know, kill it for the Lord. Um, there's just this thing that, you know, as pastors, especially if you're in ministry in any way, pastoral type, you're going to just get people's bur- burdens put on you. Counselors, are also at, at, at risk for burnout for the same reason where you just, everyone is loading their junk on you and it gets exhausting after a while. And if you don't have a healthy outlet for being healthy yourself, for resting, for setting boundaries, for all the things that are necessary for health and leadership, you're at risk for burnout. Yeah. Now you've been working with churches and ministries for a long time. You still look like you're 28, but uh, how old mm-hmm. are you anyhow? How old are you? I'm almost 40. I'm 40 in January. Yeah, you look great, but uh, you've been doing this for a long time. Uh, but how how about your personal experiences? Uh, uh, how did your personal experiences as a leader, as a consultant, factor into writing this book? Yeah, so I mean, I was I was um, when you said I was working at a church, I was the pastor's kid, so I had the pressures of pastor's kid. I was in the process of trying to like push my dad toward being a more modern church as we were growing. Uh, the church that we were at when we when, when we started there, it was 75 people. It had gone through a massive church split. You know, previously a thousand people. They were buying that building, so they were in debt for the building. Uh, but then the current property was run down. Obviously, we couldn't afford the new building. It was a messy situation we walked into. And then we were trying to get the church healthy, trying to then grow it, trying to um, modernize it, bring this 50 year old church into you know what we were trying to accomplish with the church. It was, it was a lot of work and, and there was a lot of things to do and a lot of volunteers to work with and a lot of, um, you know, just then just the general message you get with the church where, you know, people are going to leave because things are changing and then they're going to say bad things about you or about your dad. And, and there was just a lot of stuff that um, I had to wade through in ministry and it was, it was complicated. It wasn't a simple thing. Um, So then, you know, Fast forward to, the, you know, whenever, however many years later it was, 16, 18, 20 years later, whenever my friend Jason Young, uh, we wanted to write this book. He had a lot of similar experiences in church, obviously working with North, North Point Ministries, all the campuses. So massive mega church. My church was, you know, maybe on the 800 member side whenever I left. And we just had similar experiences and similar thoughts about it and uh, did a lot of the research and, and came up with these, these ideas. Now, so you've been with large churches, but I mean, in the United States today, anyhow, I mean, what's the average church size in the United States? Like 70 people, 80 people, maybe? Yeah. 75, 80, 100 around there. It's, yeah. it's, it's, um, yeah. And I mean, it's, it's, there you have the problem of one person carrying the load for everyone. Right. And, and the thing that happens in smaller churches, which is one of the amazing things about smaller churches is that people who need a little bit more attention tend to go there. I want direct access to the pastor. You know, at a church of a thousand, very few people have direct access to the pastor, right? Church of a hundred, every single one of those hundred people has direct access and sometimes their family members as well, right? Like it's, it's so, you know, we have all these people with direct access to us and it can be exhausting, you, can, you know, and, and, and we get into ministry because we love people. We get into ministry because we want to help people. We want to work hard. Nobody gets into ministry for a cushy job. Like that's, there are cushy jobs out there. Ministry is not one of them, right? You don't get in there for high pay and for easy work, right? You get in there because you're passionate about leading people, about solving problems. And um, that's kind of the premise of the book is that you can accomplish a lot and you can lead in a high capacity way while also being healthy. It is possible. And we've seen it happen. Unfortunately, we've also seen the opposite happen where people get really unhealthy and burn out and, um, Jason and I, we just wanted to help. We wanted to stop that. We've seen so many of our friends, especially during COVID, burning out, even leaving the faith, and that's tragic. 
Yeah, it, it is very. So uh, uh, let me continue to get off track here a little bit because <laughs> I like to do that. Uh, I love I love it, too. So uh, from somebody that's had experiences in both, you, you've had experiences in, what, I guess, what you would call mega churches uh, mm -hmm. and smaller churches. Um, if money wasn't an object, you know, what which one would you pick if you wanted to pastor a church? Would you church a oh. would you pastor a smaller church or would you rather pastor a mega church? I think I would want to pastor a church in the way that I think is healthy. And if it's 80 people that show up or if it's a thousand people that show up, that's that that's for me. I think you know, there's this thing that happens when a church grows where you have to change if you're wanting to keep letting it grow, right? You have to change the way you approach things. And some leaders can rock and roll with that, right? Like they have the capacity that to make those shifts to 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 change things, to change where they're no longer, you know, relating directly to people instead of now they're leading an army of people who, you know, so I think it would be about, you know, hey, this is what I can do and that's all I can do. And if, you know, people need to leave because yeah, I'm not creating the church that's right for them, that's okay, right? I think that's one of the problems that we get into is we we try to be like other people. We are trying to be a mega church. Very few people are trying to be a small church, right? Like I don't know of any pastor that wants to be small, right? Be in a small church. But so we we see, you know, what these mega churches are doing and say, if I can only do that, I'll have what they have, but it doesn't align with our unique personality and the way that God has gifted us. And it and it can cause us to, you know, we sacrifice our values, and that's one of the chapters in the book, is we sacrifice our values. You know, what do we truly value because we were wanting a different result? Um, and that can lead to burnout. Mm. All right, so let's get back to the book. Uh, Sorry to not answer your question explicitly. <laughs> Instead, I totally, I totally politicized it. I, I did the politician route. <laughs> you dodged the question. All right. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't. It was good. That was good. So the book, D Don't Burn Out, Burn Bright. Uh, you mentioned it kind of at the beginning here about some, I don't know if it was 10 strategies or something, but, but mm -hmm. what are a few of the key strategies you could just talk about here for a few minutes on the podcast? Yeah, so I mean, one of the ones which I think most people in church would relate to immediately is the idea of setting healthy boundaries kind of alluded it to it in the beginning where we were talking about how, you know, you love people, you're passionate about people, you want to help people. And the concept of setting boundaries almost feels opposite to love, right? Like, well, you can't set boundaries, right? Jesus didn't, set, he did set boundaries, but you know, like there's this, there's this notion in ministry that like, you just need to, or, you know, and, and it's true, you know, I pour myself out as a drink offering, right? Like the idea of like, there's this concept of, I want my life to be at zero, right? Like my energy level should be at zero when I die because I gave it all for the kingdom, right? The problem is a lot of what happens at churches is not necessarily ministry. You know, I mean, not as a pastor, but let's say I'm a graphic designer in church, right? Like my role is not necessarily ministry. My role is to make graphics. And there are things that happen last minute you know, hey, you know, so instead of spending time with my family, hey, can you design this graphic last minute, right? And that continually chips away at my health, my ability to prioritize certain things. So you, you get what I'm saying, though, the, the idea that, you know, sometimes boundaries don't necessarily mean that we're not doing ministry. And really, for me, the approach of boundaries is, is creating a gate that lets people in, not creating walls. I think a lot of times people think of boundaries as walls, like, well, I'm gonna keep these people out, I'm gonna keep these people out. Whereas a gate allows traffic to flow in at a healthy rate. There are times we shut the gate because we need to do something else, right? There are times we open the gate to let people in when it's appropriate. And boundaries is such an important thing. So, I mean, that's that's a big one right there that I think most people directly relate to. Yeah, I, uh, I like the idea of the gate yeah. too. I like the gate in the, that you incorporated in that. That's that's good because that imply, implies what you just said. People, you're not just keeping people completely out, but you're, yeah. you're regulating. You've got a regulator. Yeah, and then another one is, is perfectionism, I think, where we have a standard for ministry that maybe – Jesus isn't putting on us, um, especially in a, a mega church approach where we're like, we have to be excellent for the kingdom. And we can consequently try to create Hollywood level productions every weekend where, you know, we, we, are, we don't have that staff. We don't have that budget. We don't have that, you know, we don't have that infrastructure. And we have this pressure to create this amazing production to rival 
you know, Elevation Church to rival Lakewood, to rival any of these mega churches, where that's not that's not who we are. That's not the that's not the capacity we have, and it becomes really unhealthy. And we can start, you know, sacrificing our values again. I talked about that's another chapter, but that also is often what happens is we, you know, we we say, okay, well, like I, I can't actually meet with this person to minister with them because I have to make a, a an amazing graphic design for this Sunday, or I have to you know, program the lights for the Sunday. So I can't talk to my volunteer about the struggles they're going through in their marriage because I don't have time for it, which is a misalignment of priorities that excellence actually takes away from true ministry. Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, it's definitely a point. We we put a lot of, we, we uh, I'm, I'm a, I, I used to be, and I, I probably still am to some degree of perfectionist, but I saw that really interfere in relationships, you know, uh, even in my marriage, you know, yeah. <laughs> and my wife's kind of a perfectionist too. So, you know, you get two, two perfectionists <laughs> flashing. You're like, how's that going to work? But different, different ideas of what perfection is, right? <laughs> exactly. All right. So, uh, so uh, boundaries, perfectionism, give me one more thing to keep, keep in mind when it comes to avoiding burnout. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the big one, I think a big one is values as well. So, I mean, I, I have a friend who runs a, um, he runs a, like a, a church network of sorts. Like it's like this creative community. And I remember he was, he was really frustrated and ready, really ready to give in. Like, I just want to, I just want to get rid of this thing. I hate it. I hate it now, which is so interesting because he started this community. He loved it. Um, and as I was talking to him, it turned out that it was just this one sponsor that was paying him a lot of money that was asking for things he wasn't willing to give. Um, but because the money was there, he had to do it. And so he was sacrificing his values for, and you know, there was nothing wrong with making money with this community, right? Like it's good to make money from the things that you're doing, right? A worker's worth his wage. But uh, he was sacrificing the values that he had for this community for, for something else. And whenever he realigned his priorities, I helped him think through that and just say, hey, maybe you should just drop this sponsor and do without that money. And it's amazing. Once he did that, he was like, I, I love this again. I'm excited about it again. And that so often happens in churches where, you know, we, we, we value value growth you know we value hey we you know let's we want to be a thousand members we're only 800, 800 people right now but we want to get to a thousand and then what we do is we sacrifice our our rest or we sacrifice our family or we sacrifice our our team members we're like hey you know you gotta that, that graphic needs to be better and we, we abuse people and use people mm -hmm. and we're sacrificing our values for something that is good but it should not be a priority right like Growth in church is great. Reaching more people is great, but it should not be the priority. Yeah, that, that is so good. Um, all right, so I'm a pastor listening to this podcast, and I'm I'm you're you're uh, you're ringing a bell on a couple things in my life. Uh, what are some things I can do to get a to achieve more of a work life balance? Are there some some tips that you know? How can I get out of this crazy mode that I'm in and, and get in more of a balanced life? Yeah. And, you know, there's very specific things depending on what area of lack of health you're in. Right. But I think the biggest one, that, one that I always encourage people who are starting out in ministry is you have to realize that Sunday is relentless. Right. And so what, what we do is we get into this cycle of this Sunday is the only thing that I can see. And so we create duct tape solutions. If I can just get through this Sunday, I'll be okay. Right. And we maybe do things that are not going to help us long-term. You know, we like th that volunteer that like is on the verge of burnout, but I got to get my planning center roster filled. And so we, we, can you please just get in there? We duct tape them in there and they're about to wear out. Uh, we're about to lose them. But because we're trying to make this Sunday a success, we sacrificed 52 Sundays from now, right? So I encourage people who work at churches Think instead of week to week, think, what do I want my ministry to look like a year from now? What do I want my life to look like a year from now? My leadership, my family, and then start making decisions, sacrifice in the short term to be able to achieve that long term. So, you know, if you're a kid's pastor or something and you say, man, I'm just worn out. My volunteers are worn out, but I got to make this Sunday happen. What if you said, hey, we're going to shut down for a couple of, a couple of weeks. We're just not going to have kids ministry for a couple of weeks. Give our team a break, recenter, and yeah, people are going to be mad. People are going to be upset, but it's what we need to do in order to achieve health a year from now. Mm -hmm. And it feels like you can't do that, but you can, right? 
in every area of ministry, you, we don't have to do all these things that we, we do. Like, I mean, having this amazing production every Sunday, it's, it's great. I'm, there's nothing wrong with that, but we don't have to do it every Sunday. We can take a break. We can, we can strip it down one week. So that's what I encourage people to do is just think long-term about what you want it to look like and just take simple steps toward that and sacrifice in the short term to be able to get healthy in the long term. That's really good. That's good stuff. It, it takes takes a little bit of it takes some guts sometimes it takes to do guts. that, though, right? Yeah, <laughs> and you have to and you have to be honest with with a leader. You know, if you're not the, the leader, you have to be honest with your leader. Say, I don't, I don't think this is sustainable. Which takes humility on your part, right? Yeah. I don't think this is sustainable, and I, I think this is what we need to do in order to be healthy a year from now. Paint the picture of what you know. What are you, what are they going to get from this, right? Like, if you're working with a leader, you always have to lead up and say, okay, I have to help you see what I see, right? So you definitely have to paint the picture, but I mean, I don't know of a pastor who actually cares about people who's willing to say, who's, you know, unwilling to say, okay, yeah, I get it. Take, take a couple of weeks off and let's, let's recenter and, and let's get healthy. Well, all right. So uh, let's wrap this up. Let's talk a little bit about the future of ministry. You know, we, you know, we've gone through COVID, uh, you know, we, uh, our company, we do a lot of things. One of them is streaming church.tv. And so we saw a lot of people doing streaming video and that's kind of, backed off to some degree, but, uh, what do you, how do you feel like, what, what do you see as the future of ministry and the challenges for the leaders ahead here moving forward? I mean, do you have a crystal ball? I guess I, I don't have a crystal ball. That's not biblical, <laughs> is it? I guess the biblical, no. so do, do you have, do you have a, a word from God? I have a magic God? eight ball. I have a magic eight ball up there, but that doesn't give much help either. So. I like um. it. I don't, I think that's worse, but anyhow, uh, so, so, I mean, but let's talk a little bit about the future of ministry. I mean, what do you, yeah. you know, what do you think the opportunities are and anything come to your mind? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, the, the, we have this tendency as human beings in the church as well, to swing to pendulum swing, swing from one extreme to the next, right? So a while ago, we were very much like, hey, let's make this church feel like a living room. It's going to feel like our family. Um, you know, it, it was very much homey, very community, potlucks every every week, every month, you know, and I, I could go for a good potluck. And then we swing to this other, we swung, swing to this other extreme of um, let's make it excellent. Let's make it incredible. Let's, let's bring people in who have no connection with us and always be available to them. And, you know, like, you know, they don't need to be, they don't need to, you know, meet us. They can be very anonymous. They can come in and leave and but still get the message. Right. And we're swinging back, I think, to the other extreme. I think COVID, one of the things COVID taught us is that the, the least important thing that happens at church is what happens be between the beginning and the end of the service. Right. Like that, that, that like one hour is the, actually the least important part of our service because during COVID, you know, if my church didn't have a good production, I could go check out Elevation. Their production's incredible. I could go check out a huge church that had an amazing message, amazing worship. I could do all of that if I couldn't go to church. But what I missed the most was the people. I missed, you know, the diversity of ages, of socioeconomic backgrounds. I, I missed this ability to walk into a place that I'm, with people that I might not otherwise be around. But because of our commonality in Christ, there was community. And there was ability to learn from each other and ability to encourage each other. That's what we miss the most. So I really do think that there's going to be a big swing back toward, I mean, potluck dinners, you know, this, this, something as simple as that, just the idea of like, let's create spaces for community where people can really connect. And again, not necessarily connect with their tribe, which I know a lot of times we try to do with our small groups is like, you know, this is the young adults tribe. This is the youth tribe, but really getting back to what can I learn from people that are a different age of me, from me or a different race or a different you know, they, they make less money than me or they make way more than me. Um, what can I learn from them and how can I encourage them? And I think that's going to be a big shift that happens. I think everyone in church kind of feels that like, well, I, I want that, right? Every attendee, I want that community and we need to make spaces for that at our church. Yeah. It's all about relationships, isn't it? It's, it's all about yeah. community relationships. Uh, and that know. isn't to say that, you know, the service doesn't matter, right? Like the, that's, you know, sometimes the service is what gets people there. And then it's like, you know, sometimes you have the, you know, you, you never, as an adult, you never be like, Hey, you want to go, you want to go sit in my living room? Like you never say that. Right. It's always like, Hey, do you want to eat dinner? Or do you want to play a game? Like, there's always a, a reason to gather. Right. 
uh, but then the, the most important thing about what happens is just the conversations and the connection, right? The, the reason to gather wasn't really the reason to gather, which is the excuse. Yeah. Yeah. That's very good. Good stuff. All right. So the book is called Don't Burn Out, Burn Bright. Now, Jonathan Mom is our guest today, but Jonathan, you wrote this book along with a couple other people, right? Can we, we should probably mention Jason it. Young. Yeah. Yeah. Jason Young. I, we pretty much all write all of our books together. Now we wrote the comeback effect, the volunteer effect, a few others. Uh, we just enjoy working with each other. Okay. And so you have other books, as you just mentioned. Uh, I mean, should people, how can people find out more about you, the stuff you, you're doing and you've done? Yeah. I mean, if you're on Instagram, Jonathan Malm, I make silly little videos about what it's like to work at a church. Uh, people seem to like them, but yeah. And then on Amazon, all the books are on Amazon, on Audible. I've noticed Spotify now has free audiobooks. books. Uh, yeah. I think it's like 14 hours free a month, including your subscription. So all the books are there, which is cool. So the volunteer effect, the comeback effect, don't burn out, burn bright. You can listen to them there uh, and, and check them out. All right. Sounds good. Uh, before we go here, I do want to mention something I forgot to mention with us. And that is, uh, we didn't really talk about digital ministry so much today, but if you, uh, those of you listening, if you want to take a, a digital ministry assessment test, you can find it at streamingchurch.tv forward slash uh, well, what is it here? Let me look it up. <laughs> it, you can, you can, yeah, streamingchurch.tv forward slash assessment. Or if you want to just go to streamingchurch.tv forward slash resources, you'll see uh, digital ministry assessment as uh, some of the resources we offer here. Uh, we're all about ministries just like Jonathan is. And so if we can help you in any way, uh, we certainly want to be able to do that. And Jonathan, as, as always, it's been a minute, but it's great to see you again. And sounds like things are going really well for you. I hope they are. Yeah, it's uh, life is fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it certainly can be. All right. Well, uh, so w w let's wrap this up here. Uh, thanks, Jonathan. And thank you, folks for spending a little bit of time with us on the Church Solutions Podcast. And again, if we can help you in any way, if we if you want to get a hold of Jonathan and you missed all that stuff, just just reach out to us at streamingchurch.tv. We'll point you in the right direction. And uh, we sure spent, appreciate you spending some time with us today. If you haven't subscribed to the Church Solutions Podcast, uh, feel free to do so wherever you get your podcast. And if you can give us a rating, that would be good as well. All right. So for uh, Jonathan here, as well as Steve Lacey, who's not here today, my name is Phil Thompson. And please take care of yourself and each other, and we'll catch you again on another episode of the Church Solutions Podcast.